so much. Excellent. Um, so I'm, you know, I'll do a, a brief introduction uh, to the webinar and then I'll hand it over uh, to Melissa. So first of all, I want to uh, thank everyone for joining um, this webinar. I think this is a really important initiative that GRSS um, or that IEEE, sorry, has um, uh, has undertaken. Um, my name is Heather McNair and I'm a research scientist with uh, the Government of Canada and I'm here to I just facilitate this uh, this webinar. I do sit on the data port steering committee. Um, and so part of my role is to uh, really help increase awareness of the value of the data port and really to encourage the community to share data um, and to also download and use the, use the data that's available through the data port. Um, and as we all know, building models and, and testing them, um, it's really important that they're robust over time and space. Um, and that's where uh, sharing data uh, is really uh, critical to uh, to build the best models uh, that we can. Uh, so this presentation um, will uh, will provide uh, more information on the IEEE uh, data port and all of its capabilities. So Melissa will be walking you through all of that. Um, she'll also demonstrate how to access more than 6,600 data sets that are currently available uh, on the data port. And of course, these numbers of data sets are increasing all the time. Um, how IEEE data port can uh, provide more citations for your data and examples of uh, some case studies from the data port. So it's my pleasure to introduce um, uh, Melissa. So Melissa Handa is a program director within the technical activities at IEEE, and she's responsible for the strategic and operational leadership of the IEEE data port. Melissa has uh, led the design development and implementation of the platform and currently manages the platform, which has over 10 million users globally, so that's quite impressive. Prior to joining IEEE, Melissa was uh, an executive director in telecommunications and industry, and she was employed by Ericsson, Telcordia Technologies, and Bellcore. Melissa holds a Bachelor of Science a degree in biomedical engineering from Marquette University and a Master's of Business Administration um, from the University of Wisconsin. So it's our pleasure, um, Melissa, to welcome you to this um, GRSS webinar. Uh, so I'll just hand it over to you. And just to remind everyone, we'll have 10 to 15 minutes of questions at the end of Melissa's presentation. So you can put your questions in the Q&A um, or if you prefer in the chat. So over to you, Melissa. Okay. All right. Well, thank you to GRSS and thank you, Heather, for the uh, nice introduction. Um, this is a very important topic for all researchers today, and IEEE has recognized how important data is to uh, you know, research in uh, the current day and how quickly it is accelerating. Um, and so today we'll give you an overview of IEEE data port, which IEEE developed and manages, and uh, then we'll get into some specific how-tos on the platform, and then also look at some use cases. It's a very easy platform to use, and I hope you will all engage with it after you, you know, get this brief uh, introduction in this webinar. Okay, so it is no secret to anyone that uh, data is uh, going to be uh, you know, a big part of our uh, research world and our world in general uh, going forward. And there are many, many studies trying to project how much data is being generated today, but it is tremendous and uh, zettabytes of data are being generated already. AI is a big, uh, you know, reason for that. But I think it is so important that we are able to use this data uh, responsibly, effectively, and we're able to share it so that we all can uh, increase our ability to do research and drive innovation and have some valuable research results, uh, maybe, you know, on an accelerated basis. Um, because we are able to access so much data. So there are many advancements. I mean, you in the research community are very aware of 
uh, all the data analysis, AI, machine learning, uh, it's just uh, going on at a rapid pace. But researchers need data and they need lots of data so they can build the models and they can um, you know, advance their research. And Dataport was designed essentially to be both a place where people can store data sets and have access to them uh, indefinitely, and it is a place where researchers can go to get data. So um, it serves those two main purposes. And as Heather indicated in this presentation, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Dataport and its capabilities. Then we'll show how easy it is to access the data sets that are already on the platform, and that is now over 6,700 data sets. More and more are being added every day. Um, we will tell you how Dataport can provide you with more citation opportunity, and then talk about some specific use cases. I wanted to start with a short video, which will give you a broad overview and then we'll come back and I will continue to give you some more information on data port. Okay, so I hope you could all hear that and it gives you sort of a broad perspective on IEEE Dataport. Um, it is a platform that has been in um, operation for about seven years now. Um, it started out just as a pilot at IEEE, but now we have actually over 11 million global users and it is used globally. Um, almost every country is utilizing the platform. And there are over 66 or 6,700 data sets as of today. Um, but data sets are usable uh, because they are um, uploaded with a CCBY license, which is a Creative Commons license. That means that other researchers who access the data can use the data in part or in full with proper attribution, of course. So like an article, uh, data sets have to be cited um, if they are used in research. But there um, are all types of data on the platform. Um, AI is the largest category. Machine learning is the second largest category. Uh, we have an agricultural um, category. Uh, but there are about 35 categories uh, that you can 
investigate and explore. Um, and if you're uploading a data set, um, any data format is accepted with the exception of executables. Um, but as supplementary material, we also see that many people put up their code, scripts, and models. Um, you can put additional documentation. Um, you can also add links to your uh, data set. So if you have a particular lab or a uh, reference site that you want to include as a link, that can be included with the data set as well. All right, when you go to the Dataport site, which is IEEE-Dataport.org, you will see this type of screen. And the main functions are at the top of the page. Um, over on the right, you see that the primary functions are to store, share, access, and manage research data. So, um, but the main way that you interact with the platform is through the main menu up here. And if you are a researcher that's looking for data sets to use in your research, you would go to the data sets area, and that will allow you to explore and access data sets. If you want to upload a data set, you simply go to submit a data set. Um, this menu item uh, will bring you to a step-through menu, and I'll show you more details on that later. Uh, the third uh, main functionality is related to competitions. So we allow anyone to initiate or participate in a data competition at no cost. So we have many IEEE groups, such as you know, uh, the societies that are uploading competitions, but we also have people around the globe um, that are uploading competitions and inviting people to sort of uh, share in the experience of trying to you know, drive some innovation. Um, one of the most recent one was on developing some models that would facilitate uh, traffic uh, management in India it was very interesting. Uh, but that's sort of a separate module that we allow everyone to use. And finally, there is, of course, a search capability. Um, with so many data sets on the platform, uh, we need to have some search functionality that will enable you to hone in on exactly what data sets might help you with your research. Okay, so here's a little bit more about the structure of Dataport. Um, so it serves all communities, as you can see on the bottom of this uh, uh, diagram here. Uh, the data analytics community is always looking for data sets. Um, universities and research institutions use it for many different purposes. Sometimes they have their own uh, platform uh, where they enable researchers to put up their data, but it's not always fully accessible. Um, so sometimes they're looking for another solution that would enable everyone to make their data sets fully accessible to others. And in other instances, uh, researchers uh, or research institutions and universities are looking to provide their researchers with the access to all of the data sets because that can help uh, drive new research projects, um, new proposals for research, et cetera. Government agencies are interested in the platform. Um, and since there is sort of an equitable set of data sets, anyone can upload a data set to the platform. Um, they're very interested in using some of the data for training purposes, for example, in the healthcare area. Um, we have some government agencies that, like the NIH that are very interested in that. Industry is using the platform, and of course, our um, IEEE scholarly authors and conference attendees are interested. But in the middle layer, you see um, IEEE Dataport uh, being like the web interface between this community of users and where we store the data, which is currently in the AWS cloud. Um, but with every data set that is uploaded, there is a free DOI or digital object identifier provided. If you have a research article, you can link uh, your data set to that research article. And we have over 1,700 articles in Explore already that are linked to a data set in Dataport. 
The CCBY license I indicated, which enables you to use the data in part or in full. Uh, the search capability, uh, the ability to put up supplemental information. Uh, being able to store up to two terabytes uh, per data set is a differentiator for a data port. Um, other platforms may enable you to put some data up, uh, but uh, in, uh, from the very beginning, we wanted to support big data with IEEE data port. So we made the uh, capacity for individuals um, to upload up to two terabytes per data set. And that can be done at at the free level if you so choose. Uh, very easy to use and we have the data uh, competitions module. Data sets across all topics are included. It is not just on the IEEE topics, although um, you know there are many data sets that are in the uh, remote sensing and geosciences category, uh, but we have engineering-based data um, and we have other data that can be sort of mashed up with it, weather data, financial data, et cetera. So um, there's something for every field of research, I believe, on the platform. And any type of files are acceptable. One data set can include many different uh, files. So someone might have video files plus CSVs plus some audio files, et cetera. All of that can be included in one data set if that is uh, the way that the uh, data has been collected. Okay, so I have mentioned that there are some free services um, that are available on the platform. Um, there are some paid services, but we intend to make this uh, a tool accessible uh, to all researchers and usable at the free level. So any researcher can upload an unlimited number of data sets, up to two terabytes each, um, to the platform for free. Um, these would be non-open access data sets, uh, but you can upload them, manage them over time, and they will be retained indefinitely. And this is the main way that people are using the platform today. I think about uh, 5,000 of the 6,700 data sets are uh, a standard data set uploaded for free in this manner. You get the free DOI with each uh, data set. And if you're looking for data sets, um, you can access all of the open access data sets at no cost. Um, so that number is increasing. Um, it's probably more like 1,500 open access data sets that are available on the platform right now. Um, but uh, that is a tremendous resource. And we have a lot of uh, people who you know, are looking to use it at the free level, and they are finding very valuable data sets that have the open access classification. And of course, you can use the data competitions module at no cost if you're interested in either initiating a competition or participating in a competition. Uh, I also want to make it clear that, you know, IEEE membership is not required to use this platform. Uh, you do get a benefit if you are a society member, you get a free uh, subscription, which means you have access to all of the data sets, whether they're open access or non-open access. But uh, as a starting point, there is no IEEE membership required to use the platform. And every day we have people that we're sort of bringing into the IEEE community uh, because they have this interest in data, but they may not be all that familiar with IEEE. So that's not a prerequisite to be a, a member. Also, one thing that's a little unique is that the researcher retains ownership and copyright to the data if they upload a data set. So you know if you publish a paper, uh, you often have to give up the ownership and copyright to the paper itself. Uh, but in this case, we are just providing a platform that facilitates the data sharing and the data storage. And so the researcher themselves retains ownership and copyright. And so that is why like, government agencies um, are uh, very uh, uh, 
interested in putting data up on the platform. They may have it somewhere else, but they want to put it up on the platform and they know that they are retaining the ownership and copyright. So that's very important. Um, and IEEE is committed to retaining data sets indefinitely. If you are the uploader, you will always have access um, and the ability to manage data over time. Some people put up data daily, um, they add uh, monthly. Um, it just depends you know, what the research project uh, entails, but we are committed uh, at IEEE to retaining the data sets indefinitely. All right, so if you are an academic researcher, industry researcher, or someone in government, you need data. And uh, you know, where can you get easy access to usable data sets? Um, that you can do through IEEE Data Port. Um, and we have covered all topics of research, so hopefully everyone will be able to find some data sets um, that are of interest to them. And I wanted to show you how easy it is to access. I also wanted to know, people often say, um, I go out to a lot of conferences and uh, people often say, okay, I put my data on GitHub, um, but GitHub is uh, a challenge for some to find data and access data. And even if the data is on GitHub or in some other repository, you also can load it to Dataport um, and that will provide easier access to the data perhaps and bring you more exposure. So if you're looking to access data sets, very easy. You start by logging in to Dataport um, you can log in with your IEEE account, or you can create a free account. Again, membership is not required, um, so creating account is, is free. And if you are looking to log in or you need to create account, you'll probably see a page like this. Um, and I think we have about 25,000 users a day. Um, so you, that tells you how many people are using the platform. And so we invite you to log in and get started. Then if you're looking for data sets, you again would go to that main menu item and select data sets. And you will come to a page that looks something like what I'm showing on the right hand side of the screen. Um, it is, uh, uh, listing uh, with some images of uh, data sets uh, in order of a most recent um, to oldest. So the ones that are at the top of the page are the ones that were uploaded most recently. And you can see that the example I'm showing, I put in just some simple keywords uh, of remote sensing. And so it starts to give you an indication of the types of data sets um, that are available. And you also can go to uh, the more uh, selective search criteria. You could potentially search only in one category. Uh, we do have a geoscience and remote sensing category, uh, but you might want to do a global search as well because some of the data you might need might not necessarily fall into that uh, category. You also can put in data, site, data set type um, which you can specify open access or all um, or just standard data sets. Um, so you can get a little bit more selective in your search. You also can go to the data set categories that are shown here. And uh, along with the category name, it tells you how many data sets are uploaded in that particular category. And it ranges everything from agriculture, Here's the geoscience and remote sensing. Um, I know it's very small type, but um, there are many categories that you can look into. And as I said, artificial intelligence is the largest category uh, right now, and there are 1,600 plus data sets in that category. And machine learning is not far behind with about 1,400. Um, so if you are looking for data sets, um, this is how you get started on the platform. And this is an example of if you found a data set and you pulled it up and you, you know, wanted to 
you know, get into the, uh, the data itself, um, this is what you would see. Um, you would see some metadata at the top, an abstract, and then instructions, which we ask the uploader to provide. And that enables them to define the structure of the uh, data um, and, you know, give more information on how the data can be usable. Over on the right, uh, you see the actual data files themselves. And um, so if you are interested in downloading data, you can do that by going to the individual files. Some people zip everything up into one file, um, but I think uh, the majority of the people just put the individual files in there. And if you prefer, or if the data is too large, uh, then you can access the data directly in the AWS cloud. Uh, there is a button that says access on AWS, and you will be provided with secret keys if you are logged into the platform, so you're able to access the data directly in AWS. And many people do that when the data sets become very large. So that is how easy it is to access data sets on the platform. Uh, and on the other side, if you are an academic researcher or industry researcher or government researcher and you are creating your own data and you want to store and share that data with others, uh, then you can also use IEEE data port. Um, so if, David, if, if data is private um, or has any you know, personal identifiers in it. Uh, we don't allow that to be uploaded to the platform, but there's a lot of data that people have taken a lot of time and effort to prepare, and it is shareable, and you can upload that data, and you may get some citations on your data set if others find it valuable. Um, but So I'm going to go into now how simple it is to store your data on the platform. Oh, first I'm going to mention uh, that, you know, we are seeing an increase in uh, sort of enforcement of people publishing their data. Um, I think data management has always been important to the research community, uh, but we haven't always had these rules that say, okay, in addition to uh, publishing your research results, you should also publish the data that's associated with your research. And that is coming, um, is already very strong in Europe. Um, the U.S. is ramping up. Specific government agencies are ramping that up. And their goal is to ensure that data that was funded can be reused and it will help with research reproducibility. Um, and as I say, the enforcement, I think, is starting to step up. So if you want to get sort of ahead of the curve, you know, make sure that you have a plan for publishing your data, making it accessible, and if you so choose, Dataport can be that platform that you use. All right, if you are ready to upload a data set, it is very easy. Um, you would go to the main area of the uh, platform, submit a data set. Submit a data set is up here in the main uh, menu. Um, and if you need some help or some um, guidance, instructions, you can always go into more detail uh, by following this area, which also says submit a data set. Uh, but it is very simple. People do it every day. New users of the platform do it every day without any issues. So when you get to submitting a data set, um, you will be given three options. One is the standard data set, which is non-open access. Uh, two is open access, but there is a fee associated with that, just like there's a fee for publishing open access articles. And there's a third option, and that is for data competition. So if you're looking for a free upload of uh, data, you would use the standard data set option, which, as I mentioned, is the primary method that people use for uploading data today. When you go into submitting a data set, 
you will follow a step-by-step -step process uh, with some required metadata, some optional metadata. Uh, the more information you put in, the easier it would be, you know, to search and find uh, the appropriate data. Uh, but you will be asked for not only metadata, like uh, who are all the citation authors or you know owners of the data, uh, data title, what category or categories you want to put it in, what keywords, et cetera. You can link it to a research article if you have a research article already published. Um, you can indicate the funding agency. Um, and after this initial uh, page, which I'm showing in the uh, diagram here, um, you will also be asked to upload an abstract uh, for the data, uh, instructions for the data. Uh, it's beneficial if you put in a custom image. We have some you know, stock images that come up, but if you have a custom image, I know that attracts a lot of attention from the users. And then the data set files themselves, again, any type of file or files can be uploaded and then supplemental material like scripts, models that you want to include. Um, so it's a very organized and step-by-step -step process that you can follow to upload a data set. Um, we, we do encourage people to make sure they have their data files ready. Um, you can uh, put up an entry and then follow up and put the data in at a later time. Uh, but we put sort of a six-month uh, limitation on that, um, and, you know, we'll come back to you and ask if you have a data set entry that really doesn't have data files. So it's best if you have all the data ready to go when you start the process. So overall, you know, what uh, can Dataport do for you? Um, so, of course, you get the free two-terabyte data storage. Um, and the free DOI. Um, institutional customers, by the way, get 10 terabytes per data set. Um, so they usually have a, a higher uh, volume of data that they're looking to upload. Um, and uh, institutions can also buy a set of uh, free open access um, uploads for their community if they so choose. But that's very beneficial. Your data must be shareable, though. It's not, um, you know, just any free two terabyte data storage. It is for research data. Um, you are going to be giving a CCBY license to it so that others can use it with proper citation. Uh, but that's a, a big value to many researchers. Um, you will get global exposure for your research for sure. Um, some of the testimonials and um, people that we have talked with have indicated that that is probably the number one benefit. You may be doing some fantastic research and only you and uh, a PI or your advisor knows about the research, but this is a way to really um, bring that research out to the global community and get some really good exposure. Um, and it has really benefited people um, and they're very grateful for you know, the opportunity. I should say that you know, users, if they're interested in your data set, they will also have the opportunity to rate the data set. Um, they can comment on the data set or they can act, um, contact the data owner uh, privately. Um, so there is an opportunity for collaboration as well. Uh, participating in the global data competitions, that's a benefit. Uh, being able to access all of the data sets that are there, again, they are usable in your research with proper citation. And that is very valuable for those that are trying to train models um, or are uh, in a particular type of research that um, you know, you're looking to see what other people are doing in your field. Um, so uh, that can be uh, probably uh, one of the highest uh, benefits as well. You can join a data community and collaborate um, getting more citations, I'll talk more about this in another slide, um, and meeting funding agency requirements. So if you are, um, you know, being asked to publish your data, uh, Dataport is recognized by many government agencies as an appropriate platform on which to share your data. 
Um, you can share it as open access if required, or you can share it um, for free as a standard data set. Okay, this slide is on the uh, topic of trying to get more citations. So data sets are citable, just like research articles, and we do uh, count citations on the platform um, for data sets. So with one research project, um, people have indicated, you know, we really now have an opportunity for someone to get three citations. One, if they have the data set associated with the research, they can get a citation for the data set. Uh, two, if you so decide, you could write a data descriptor article and publish it in a new IEEE journal called IEEE Data Descriptions, and that gives you an opportunity to get a second uh, citation and uh, another publication as well. There are other journals. Um, we're not exclusive to just using IEEE. I, we know there are other journals where uh, you can write a data descriptor article, but then again, you know, you still have that opportunity for a citation. And then finally, if you have a research article published in IEEE journals or other journals, again, you have that third opportunity for a citation. So I think it's very beneficial if people think of this, you know, three-way approach. Um, it, you'll certainly be supporting research reproducibility, and you will be giving yourself an opportunity for more citations. This is just a quick view of some popular data sets. You can see the number of views that they are getting, um, and it goes across all topics. Data competitions get tremendous views. So if you are looking to get some exposure or some assistance with trying to resolve some type of you know, technical issue in your research and you have some data and you want to put out there that you're having this competition and you're looking for people to build models, et cetera, you can see that these uh, competitions get hundreds of thousands of views. Um, so not all of them, but, you know, these are two examples where we had tremendous usage and uh, so that can be very beneficial. And now just a couple of use cases, and then we'll get to the questions. Um, this is a climate change data set. It is used for wildfire early detection. Um, and you can see here, um, this is on the platform, but the citation authors or the people who contributed are from multiple universities, um, some government um, agencies. Um, and, you know, so it's a collaborative effort. Um, it was the IS Win Lab, um, and this data set has gotten 14,000 plus views and gotten a good rating, four ratings, maybe of five stars. Um, so uh, this is just an example of a, um, this is a standard data set. Somebody put this up at no cost, and it is really, I think, bringing exposure to this valuable research and also sharing data with other researchers that might be beneficial to try to advance um, some of the research in this important area. Here is an example of a data competition. So this competition is closed, but this was on energy forecasting. So again, building like a forecasting model um, could be you know, being asked to build a different type of model, an AI model, et cetera. But um, this ran for a few months, February of this year to May, um, got almost 18,000 views. Again, a collaborative effort between industry and uh, academia uh, from a couple of different academic institutions and a couple different um, industry members. Um, and uh, this was a tremendously successful uh, competition. Uh, usually for uh, something like energy forecasting, uh, those that put up the competition will have a benchmark of, you know, what they expect uh, will happen. And they had, you know, many uh, results and submittals uh, that exceeded the benchmark. And so they're improving their energy forecasting models through this competition. 
And here's an example of an open access data set. So you will see on all open access data sets the open access icon. Uh, this is related to AI, uh, but the open access data sets um, would be available, all the data files would be available to anyone who um, logs into the platform and is looking for data that they can use for free. So that is what I had for the presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, that that was excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Melissa. Um, and I just wanted there was a uh, just a bit of back and forth at the beginning of the webinar. So I believe uh, that the uh, this pre this webinar has been recorded. And um, if you weren't, uh, if you'd like to share the uh, the recording with uh, colleagues, it uh, it will be available through the GRSS YouTube uh, channel, I believe. So. Um, we'll make sure that that is um, advertised as well through GRSS. Uh, so there are a few questions in the Q&A, Melissa. Um, so question about, the first question was around um, if the platform uh, is or will be available in other languages. So specifically um, uh, Spanish and Portuguese or, or other languages as well. We are looking into that. We don't currently have it uh, translated into other languages. Uh, we actually ask that people who are uploading data sets initially put them in in English. We've had plenty of <laughs> other uh, submittals that come in in other languages, and those we try to translate at least to English, but going the other way to uh, translate it so it's available in Spanish or Portuguese, that is on our enhancement list, but um, I don't think that'll be coming uh, at least until 2025. Heather, I think you're muted. I am, thank you. <laughs> so the second question was around uh, the availability of tutorials. Oh, for the platform itself, um, on how to use the platform? Uh, I, I'm i guessing that's what the question was about, but if the, uh, Carlos who posted it, if you have clarification, you can uh, post again, but I, I think that's what the intent of the question was. Okay, so uh, we do offer uh, demos and tutorials uh, to any interested uh, group of um, individuals or uh, to industry. Uh, we talk to a lot of academic institutions and provide them with the information. Uh, we are looking to um, develop a video recording uh, that will be a tutorial. Uh, but if someone is interested in a um, more in-depth uh, tutorial, how to use the platform um, and see examples of how data sets are actually uploaded, et cetera, we'd be happy to do that at any time. And uh, my contact information is shown on this slide right here. Anyone can feel free to contact me directly. Um, I'd be happy to accommodate that need for a tutorial. Um, okay, so the next question is around the, the, the fee for the open access. So the uh... Uh, David is asking, what is the rationale for setting the price for open access data sets uh, so high at two, around $2,000? Mm -hmm. Well, I think when IEEE started, uh, IEEE Dataport, uh, we were working off of the IEEE Explore model. Um, and it is very similar with the exception of the ownership and copyright um, maintenance it is very similar uh, to explore. And so that fee uh, was the same at the time, was the same as what uh, the fee was for an open access article. Uh, so that is how we set it. Um, from time to time, we do offer a, a, a discounted uh, promotion. Um, so you can look for that um, and 
many people have been able, I said, you know, maybe about 1,500 or so open access data sets. Many people have built that into their research project and then they pay for it. Um, some have asked that we invoice their academic institution so they can pay for it, um, but it is being used and um, we haven't gotten a lot of feedback even through our surveys that um, that fee is unusually high. So um, that that is how it came about. Um, okay, so the next question, and I apologize, I'm translating into from Spanish to English. So if I don't get the question entirely correct, uh, please re repost. Um, so the question is, as a as a personal user, institutional user, I think just a clarification that um, uh, you're you're able to generate um, data competitions um, that result in in case studies. So I think that's just a, a clarification question. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Any individual or a group or an institution is able to initiate data competitions on the platform at no cost. Um, and uh, you will, if you go to the competitions modules, you'll see the active and the, um, you know, uh, those that have completed those data competitions. Some are put up by IEEE societies. Um, some are put up by the consortiums of academia and industry, but anyone can start that for free. Um, and you it can uh, have people register for the uh, competition. You can manage that registration process and you can collect all of the submittals right on IEEE data port. So um, it's sort of a full service competition uh, module. And if you need any assistance with that, um, anyone can reach out to me and uh, we'd be happy to help you uh, get that set up and get started. Just use this up. This is an opportunity to interject on that I, because I was really uh, intrigued with this potential. And as a government institution, we have a lot of research questions to answer. And um, I always say to my team, we just want the, the best answer that we can get, whether it's a method we develop or, or somebody else develops. So this is a really interesting way to use our data sets um, and share them and um, invite the community to come up with um, a solution for us. So I think that's a really important um, functionality of the data port. Uh, so Aslam, uh, uh, um, Aslam is just um, commenting uh, all in caps as well. Excellent job, Melissa. So um, just a shout out uh, to the, the team as well as your presentation. Um, and uh, Muzmi is asking, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for a wonderful insight into the presentation. And she's asking, are these uh, raw data or pre-processed data that are available? It is a combination. Um, for some data sets, uh, people are providing uh, the raw and the processed data, um, and others, you know, it's up to the user. Uh, we are not uh, monitoring exactly what type of data is being put up. So some of it will be raw data, and some of it will be processed. And in some cases, we know that people put up like a full complement of uh, data so it will enable people to better understand it and use it more effectively. So you really have to just go into each of the data sets you're interested in and you know, look at the data. In the abstract and the instructions, it should also give you an indication of whether the data is raw data or process data, um, et cetera. I am mute again. <laughs> you would think after like years of Zooming, I would uh, know better. Uh, so apologies for that. Uh, so the question is, once the data is uploaded to Dataport, is it possible to modify or remove it? Yes, yes, it is. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the data owner retains ownership and all editing capabilities. Uh, we have people that uh, go back in, either update their data, there is version control. So you may have a data set uh, up 
published already and you want to update it, and you can do that. And uh, as I said, we'll retain the old files, but um, the newest data set can be put up. Um, there are people that add to their data set uh, daily. So it's really up to you. If you find a need to unpublish it, that also can be done by the data owner um, just through the editing capability. So um, we don't encourage that because some people might be uh, using it or you know, looking for that type of data. But if need be, we've had um, situations, particularly with industry data, where uh, they you know, found out that you know, maybe they shouldn't have published all of it, so they are going to unpublish it and then reinvestigate you know, what uh, data elements should be put up. And I think the next question is uh, somewhat related to that, but I'll I'll read it out. And if you have anything to add, Melissa, um, so David's asking, uh, is there support for seeing for living data sets? That's a a great way to uh, to categorize them. They're updated periodically. So, for example, image time series being extended forward in time after the initial submission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have uh, this type of data on the platform. Um, Typically, people are putting it in in increments. Um, and if you want to just add another uh, data file that says, you know, this is the you know October 2024 update or you know third quarter update, um, that can be uh, accommodated. Uh, you have control um, of you know what you want people to see from the data, uh, but if you have a living data set. Um, that is continuously being added to, the platform can accommodate that. Excellent. Um, and a, a comment, a, another comment from Carlos. Um, so a big thank you, uh, Melissa, for the presentation um, and underscoring um, the importance of having um, a platform like this available in other languages. And um, for example, in Latin America, there are uh, 400 million um, Spanish speakers and, and 200 million Portuguese speakers. Um, but thanking you again for the presentation and the invitation for, from GRSS for this and my translation, which was more Google Translate than from myself. So <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> so we Thank do have... Thank you. We, we do have a few more minutes. Uh, if there are any questions uh, that anyone um, has... And just to underscore, um, you can reach out to Melissa if you have uh, further questions um, on this. I know my team has um, initiated uploading uh, some of our data sets as well. And from my, what my team has uh, said, it underscores what Melissa said, it's quite easy to do so. Um, so I, I do um, really encourage everyone to, uh, you know, to make the effort to go in and explore the, the, the data port and consider sharing some of their data. Um, so I think um, just another thank you for the presentation, Melissa. Do you have anything you would like to say, say in closing before we uh, we end the webinar? No, well, just thank you all for um, participating, learning more about uh, the platform. I encourage you all to go um, and just start to explore the platform and see how easy it is to use. And I hope you find it very valuable that uh, you know, it's what IEEE has developed the platform for. It's, it's uh, for the user base, and uh, we think it is filling a need uh, in the research community. So we're very grateful to uh, have the opportunity to, to share this with you today. Well, thank you so much, Melissa, and, and thanks to the uh, GRSS um, uh, committee as well for making the webinar committee for um, hosting this webinar and um, giving us this opportunity to share this this really important initiative. So big shout out to GRSS as well. Uh, so with that, I think uh, we'll close off the webinar, but do re reach out to Melissa if you have more questions and check out the, um, the recording on the GRSS uh, YouTube channel as well. So uh, thank you very much, Melissa.